I've been real fascinated with David from the Bible. It's funny because, like, as a kid, I didn't even know David was a king. Like, like I said, I'm new on this journey, and uh, I'm not a preacher. I never went to minister, ministry, ministry school. How do you say it? I've never been to them places. You know what I'm saying? Anything I learned is from me just doing research and studying on my own. And like growing up, I, I never really like knew too much. All I knew from David was he killed the life. Like I never knew he became king. I never knew the story before that. I never knew what happened after that. But as I started going on my walk with Christ, he low. Now I, I can't say he's my favorite, but he's like top five favorite people in the Bible because of his story. Like it's been it's been Daniel for a minute. But I feel like, you know, looking at David's story, you know what I'm saying? And it was real compelling to me because God described David as a man after his own heart. And it's like, yo, we had a lot of dedicated, like, people in the Bible. I look at Daniel, like, bro, he went in the lion's den because of faith. But he was never described as that, you know what I'm saying? So I kind of studied in the, into David, and I can see parallels of his life, how we could use it in our life in today's society. I don't know if it's just me or I just got the dirtiest acid and my kids just be demolishing my car. Like, I'll be having to get this thing clean like every week. Now, that's the difference between getting your car clean every week and having to get it clean every week. I have to get my car clean every week. And like it's about to come right now. like a madman all black and it's like 30 degrees outside it's a smooth little park they got this little stadium thing little, little lake some loud freaking kids over here but i ain't gonna show them nice smooth place to favorite things about David and a lot of you guys know is how he defeated Goliath and when he defeated Goliath he, he destroyed him with a stone but what you guys probably don't even realize is that Goliath was a nine feet tall behemoth like they don't make him like that you know what I'm saying he was built different he was taking his creatine powder you know what I'm saying he was taking some b-ball some tests he was really on one and the thing is is that you know all of the Israelites were scared to fight him they, Goliath even said, look, instead of all of y'all dying, look, just give me your best fighter and we can settle it right now. Nobody wanted to do it. The king at the time, Saul, even said, listen, whoever defeat him, I, I give you everything. You know what I'm saying? So at the time, Goliath was, you know, talking stuff and coming at God and David just happened to pull up. He wasn't even fighting. He was bringing something, uh, some provisions for his brothers. And um, what happened was... You know, he heard him and he was like, yo, who is this uncircumcised dude talking talking all crazy? And he's like, nah, that's, that's a giant. They said what's on the line. So David was like, I kill him. Too easy. I kill him. The thing is, a lot of people don't realize that David was a shepherd in the mountains, protecting his flock, protecting his sheep, like, like Jesus did with us. And he, he protected them sheep from lions from bears and that's what he said to, to Saul he was like you know I've been delivered from the paws of a bear he he was killing him you know what I'm saying and I don't care how big a human is if I'm killing lions and bears ain't no man putting fear in my heart see the thing is is that we all face our Goliath our Goliath is our real big problem and I realized the hard ways when I ask God for strength he's not gonna just magic magically make me strong and I can just solve my problems no he gave me situations to make me strong. He gave me lions and bears to defeat. So when I face my Goliath, I can do it boldly through faith through him. You know what I'm saying? And that's the thing that I realized is that David was able to move boldly because he knew what was behind. He knew who was behind him. You know what I'm saying? He was right. And, and God been preparing him for us. He been, you know, making him strong. He been, he been sending the lions and the bears and sending him tougher and tougher opponents 
and David Faith was strong to where he was able to defeat Goliath. Another thing about David, they got speakers and random spots on his phone. Another thing about David that kind of, you know, brought it home is that the Bible is full of people that got redeemed through God, but nobody was ever described as a man after God's heart. So when you hear somebody described as a man after God's heart, you got to think it was something special about him. But in all reality, you know, he just was somebody who was fully submitted and fully committed to pleasing the Lord and being obedient, you know. God was his source, God was his sustainer. And, you know, David fell in a real bad way. You know what I'm saying? He fell into temptation. And one thing about that is I realized is this way that happened was the Israelites was at war. David decided not to go. They said he slept in. He went on his balcony and saw a chick bathing. And he told her to come up. He slept with her, she got pregnant. Now to keep his honor, you know, he tried to have her husband come back who was at war and sleep with her, but he was so loyal to David that he didn't want to sleep with his wife while his other comrades was at war. Now, David, to try to cover it up, he sent him back to war to get killed, which means he, he murdered them. So he committed adultery and he murdered somebody. And at the end of the day, they still said David was a man after God's own heart because of what he did after, he repented. He, he fully submitted to God and he repented and God was still able to use him. You know, when David died, he went. To, uh, God went to his son Solomon. He was like, look, because your father was such a loyal and faithful servant, ask me for anything and I'm gonna give it to you. And he didn't say your father, like he, he that, that, was, that was erased because he repented. And that's the thing, you might have done something in your life that you feel like I can't be redeemed, I can't come back from this. He killed somebody. He took an innocent man's life and took his wife. And God was able to use him still. You know, God still declared him a man after God on heart because he truly repented. And repentance is not saying, oh, I'm sorry. No, it's you apologize, you feel guilt, and you turn away from that. You try not to do it again. So don't let the fact that you're dealing with something, that you did something, you lived a certain type of life, and God won't love you and God will use it against you. God is not us. You know what I'm saying? His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. He's way, he's way above us. So don't, don't get too caught up in your shortcomings and your downfalls. Remember... He's God our Father, all forgiven. Through His grace and mercy, you know, He's going to forgive us. guys enjoyed this video i gotta i gotta get a mic so i was editing in this video i'm doing this after i'm done the audio is horrible so bear with me until i can find a mic i want to find a good decent price mic but hope you guys enjoyed this video hope this is useful and helpful to anybody that's going through some stuff know that you're not alone there's a whole bunch of people going through stuff stay up y'all let's conquer this through christ